Dynamite Magazine. During the late 70s, this was my go-to publication if I wanted to learn about what was currently the next big thing in pop culture. Just look at all of these amazing covers. The Fonz, John Denver, Steve Martin, Donnie and Marie, Battlestar Galactica, and the Incredible Hulk. Yep, I know there's more covers here and I could call them all out. But let's talk more about the magazine for a moment. According to Wikipedia, Dynamite was a magazine that was published by Scholastic from 1974 until 1992. The magazine changed the fortunes of that company, becoming the most successful publication in its history. The first issue, Dynamite No. 1, was dated March 1974 and featured the characters of Hawkeye and Radar from the television series MASH. The final issue, Dynamite No. 165, was dated March 1992 and featured actress Julia Roberts and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now here's my earliest memory of Dynamite Magazine. Truthfully, I can't remember the issue that I got this amazing poster out of, but this King Kong 3D poster was an object of fascination on my bedroom wall for years. It came with 3D glasses, of course, and when you put them on, it really did seem like those planes were in front of and behind Kong. Really great stuff. Of course, it wasn't the posters that kept me buying the magazine. Yeah, I really did want to know more about Shields and Yarnell. And the return of the Brady Bunch? Well, heck yeah, tell me more! There was just something magical about this magazine. I have read that it was available in some major cities on newsstands and even by subscription, but the way that I got my dynamite fix was at school through the Arrow Book Club. About once a month, my junior high school teacher, hello Mrs. Marks, would pass this thing out and expect it back within a few days with a buck or two. Not sure if our teachers got a kickback for being a shill for Scholastic Books. I sure hope they did. Anyway, so after I turned in my order form, I'd wait. And wait. Yeah, and wait some more. There was no prime shipping back in those days. Seriously, it would take around a month for your books to arrive. And when you're a 12 or 13 year old kid, well, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Dynamite was so popular that other companies wanted in on it, wanted a piece of the action. The one that I really remember was Pizzazz Magazine. It was an attempt by Marvel to replicate Dynamite's success. You know what? Stan and team, they did a pretty good job. One of my favorite Pizzazz covers was this one, featuring the greatest Superman of all time, Christopher Reeve. Yep, the trademark Marvel humor was there. Apparently it wasn't enough though because Marvel gave up on this publication after just three years. Scholastic on the other hand, well they knew how to milk a good idea and so we got Bananas Magazine, a similar publication, albeit slightly more irreverent. There was also Wow Magazine which was aimed at a younger elementary school audience. Bananas Magazine was edited by a guy named Jovial Bob Stein. His wife had, for a period of time, edited Dynamite Magazine and Jovial Bob as it turns out, well, he had a thing for the macabre, which would later propel him to become one of the most popular authors of young adult fiction ever. Yep, we're talking about R. L. Stein. Once Stein began writing humor-laced horror for young adults, there was no looking back. TV shows and movies followed, but we're not here to talk about Stein. Let's get back to the topic at hand. So in addition to the amazing articles, Dynamite would often showcase superheroes. If memory serves me correctly, the Superheroes Confidential feature was somewhat agnostic in that one month it would showcase a DC Comics hero and the next month we'd get one from Marvel. I love that I could finally read comics in school. Yep, I felt genuinely sneaky cracking open an issue of Dynamite and learning all about the Fantastic Four. <laughs> I also loved another recurring feature called Bummers. These cartoon gripes were actually real-life submissions from kids everywhere, and if you got your bummer published, well, you were set for life because Dynamite would send you a crisp $5 bill. There were usually six bummers in each issue, so yes, Scholastic actually got a page of their magazine written for a whopping 30 bucks. Of course, they still had to pay someone to draw the pictures, but I'm thinking those guys got a great deal smart like a fox they were. 
I also loved Count Morbida and his monthly puzzle page. What I really loved was how upset and angry he would get when I solved his puzzles. Yep, the magazine knew exactly what they were doing. Month after month, I would work on my problem-solving skills all while thinking that I was just having fun. These skills would later prove invaluable throughout my entire life. Thank you, Dynamite Magazine, and thank you, Count Morbida. I've already talked a bit about that really cool King Kong poster that I got out of Dynamite Magazine, but the magazine it was really kind of like a cereal box with a neat toy buried at the bottom. Posters, trading cards, and other cool things were often tucked inside of the magazine. Yep, I said it earlier, and it's true. It was truly magical. All right, one last picture. This time of a cover featuring those creepy Sleestack characters from that iconic 70s kid show, Land of the Lost. Yep, Dynamite Magazine just seemed to be in tune with all of the stuff that I really love. Such great memories. Now it's your turn to share your memories in the comments section below. And while you're at it, if you enjoyed this little journey through time, please consider giving this video a thumbs up or maybe sharing it on Facebook or Twitter. And what the heck, why not subscribe to my humble little channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.